As bright as it is, it got brighter. Everybody Kelly Hart came into the studio. She is here right now. This is Ocala Magazine Radio. And Kelly is the executive editor of Ocala Magazine. we got a beautiful new issue out there on, uh, on the you. table here in the in the cloud room, or whatever we call that area over there. Good morning, Kelly. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm fantastic. And uh, do, are you going to any of those movies that we're showing this weekend in all the, that big international film festival? I, Personally, I don't have I don't have any plans to go. Of course, anything related with the magazine, we plan to do some coverage there. So uh-huh. uh, it may not be me personally, but uh, you know, always. But there will be right. some some involvement with the magazine so that we can participate and cover that. It's exciting. The I mean, I think it's so great for the downtown area. It is. It's it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's amazing. I've already loved watching people's posts, you know, on Facebook of the movie that they've gone to see and kind of yeah. making a night of it and so yeah. it's such a fantastic theater I'm so happy that it's there because I know at one time it was you know kind of up for debate as to what we do with that theater and so I'm just glad that it has survived and is still there do you know the one thing that is the we were talking about this morning how technology has changed movies and music and sports and everything sure. else but the core of it all really is still the written word isn't it I think I mean, so. Of course, look who you're asking. <laughs> I might be a little biased. Well, even somebody who doesn't write, though. I mean, sure. how, how could that even be argued? That the, sure. the story is ultimately what's going to hold you to, to wanting to see more sure. of that movie. Absolutely. And, I mean, it, it's kind of like music. I mean, so much goes into music, and there are people that will enjoy a song because of the, the beat, the melody. And then there are those that enjoy it because of the words. And so it's just neat when it all comes together and you can enjoy it. You can enjoy both things. Sure, but, sure. You know, I'm I'm one of those people that if I have a song, if I hear a song and the words really speak to me, it doesn't really matter so much to me what the melody might be, but I can listen to that song over and over right, and over right. and really come to love it. You know, even if it's like a country song, for example, which I'm not necessarily fond of country music, but there are a few songs that the lyrics are so beautiful or touching for some reason to me personally that... I will oh, listen sure. to it over and over and over. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. You remember after September 11th, 2001, I also was not a big country fan, but there were some country f- songs that really, oh, my gosh. really made you feel good to be an American. There are. Yeah. There are some country songs that uh, I know are r- pretty popular at weddings for father-daughter dances. That's right. That's and right. Yeah. those songs, they get me every single time. Yes. They get me yes, every they single sure time. You know, yeah. I have such a great relationship with with my father and every time I hear him it doesn't even matter I don't have to necessarily be at a wedding to hear it and when I really start applying that to me and how I feel for my dad it just you know tearjerker every single time absolutely yeah. and that's great and that's that's when I think you know you've really written something well is that it evokes some type of emotion in someone um, in fact in our new April issue I wrote a story on suicide and you know, of course, every month I take the new issue to my mom and dad because they're anxious to read what right, I've written. Right. And we were going to dinner and my mom was in the car reading, not driving while she was reading. <laughs> so I was driving. Right. Uh, and she was reading it and she just started crying. And I said, Mom, what? And she, she, was, she just stopped and she said this story about Chris Johnson and suicide uh-huh. as a whole. I mean, she was just crying. And I was like, yes, you know, and she was like, gave me a look like well I'm I'm yeah, so right, happy right. that you, you made know, your I'm mother cry why are you and I said excited no about that's that. exactly that was that's that's what I want I want it to be touching and compelling that's how I always feel like I've done my job is if someone's reading what I've written and either you know it's laughing hysterically or crying or you know it really makes somebody angry and motivated oh, we have to do something about this that's when I feel like I've done my job so. it, it is an amazing energy uh, w- words I mean they can be bland they can be nothing but when you look at a, like a, a library full of books and you realize all of the life that is sure. to be discovered between the covers of all of those books absolutely yeah. it's amazing it's amazing. And I do want to talk a little bit about this this story today. Um, we do have a guest scheduled. It's Dr. Kummer with um, ICE, the Institute of Cardiovascular Excellence. Um, he was scheduled to be here this morning. If, it, if he shows up, we can meet with him the second half. But obviously, he's a very important cardiologist. So right, right. we understand things come up. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about the suicide story in the event that maybe he's running late or something. Um, 
several weeks ago, Chris Johnson, who is uh, an Ocala native, he went to Trinity Catholic. I'm sure you read about it. It wasn't. It was not just actually local news, but it was national news because. He is from Ocala, and he did play football and was a stellar athlete here in Ocala for Trinity Catholic. Went on to play for the University of Florida and then was finishing his his college career in Pennsylvania. And um, several weeks ago, he committed suicide. And it really kind of rocked Ocala and uh, even the University of Florida, Pennsylvania, his local classmates. But it made national news because, of course, ESPN and those types of outlets will pick up when a student athlete you know, either gets in trouble or, or, sure. or does something tragic such right, as this. Right. And suicide, I mean, it's, it's not like this is anything new. Of course, it's out there and it's been happening. But when I saw the, I guess when I saw just how overcome everybody was as a whole, I thought, okay, we hear about this, but why are we not talking about this? Why is suicide such a taboo subject when it's taking lives every single day. Why are we not talking about this more? And so I started doing my research and I, I, you know, I always take to Facebook when I'm looking for resources and feedback for potential feature stories. And so I mentioned that, you know, I was really just, I was, I was moved by Chris's death and, um, you know, saddened for his loss and for his family and anybody who has been touched with, with suicide and thought this is my opportunity to write about it and wanted to get some feedback. And I do this all the time. And you, typically the feedback I get is very public. People will comment right, right underneath right, there, right. you know, oh, I've been here, I do this. Or um, I saw in this particular circumstance, I was getting a lot of private inbox messages, people wanting to share their story in their relationship with suicide, uh, whether it was someone close to them that you know that they lost right, or maybe right, right. they themselves had contemplated suicide but i could see that it was very private it was it was it was one of these conversations that we like to keep private and not public so i thought okay my theory on this is is true even just in this little experiment on facebook in that people are afraid to talk about it and so uh, i have a very close friend of mine whose husband committed suicide when her son was just 6 months old and i reached out to her in hopes that maybe she could kind of shed some light on the topic of suicide and, and how it affected her. And what I found from her story is very common in what I was reading and researching online, and that is that, you know, we'll talk about being sick. Like, for example, if, you know, if you can't, if you can't tell, you know, I'm nasal today, I've got a sore throat, you know, we don't mind talking about, oh, I've got a cold, I'm sick, or right, right, I have right. a broken arm. Um, in fact, we read on social media all the time that you know maybe somebody or someone's child was diagnosed with some serious illness please keep us in your thoughts your prayers be, be praying uh, so it's like we don't have any issue talking about physical illness but when it comes to mental illness we shut down we we don't talk about it it's very taboo and of course mental illness is a is a huge contributing factor to suicide and so why aren't we talking about that? Why is it so taboo to talk about our mental illnesses you know and the stigmas that go along with them and it was like my friend Anita was telling me, she said, you know, when you talk about suicide, people think you're crazy. They call you crazy. They think you're weak. What a weak person, you know, how, what, a, what a selfish, easy way out, you know, just to take their own life. And right. they didn't even think about the people that they left behind, how selfish and how weak. And in, in researching this, and I, I can tell you that at one time I, I had that same thought. I thought, what, what can be so bad? that you can't cope with it or that you can't overcome whatever it is. You know, is that a, is it a cowardly thing to do just to end life so that you don't have to face whatever it is? And I, and so my, my thoughts on that were kind of challenged in reaching out and doing the story in that it is not a weak thing to do at all. And that the, and I don't want to use the word courage, uh, but I guess the strength that it takes to come to that decision is, is maybe not, not what we think that it is. And people's reasons for doing that do not make them crazy, but they have issues. And because of the, the society that we live in that has given so many stigmas to mental health disorders, we are afraid to talk about it because we don't want to look like we're crazy. So I think so many lives are lost simply because people are afraid to have the dialogue about suicide really? that could ultimately save their life. Um, and I wrote about the stigmas in there and when I was doing the story, I really wanted to focus on, on Chris's death and use that as the motivation 
um, for the story. And I can share a little bit more about that because I know we have to take a break. Um, what I learned about Chris and his story. All right. We'll take that. We'll uh, find out when we come back. We'll be right back. This is WOCA. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of sun and clouds today with a shower with thunderstorm in spots this afternoon and this evening. The high 84 at the coast, 91 inland. Partly cloudy overnight, though 64 inland, 70 at the coast. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a shower and thunderstorm or two around at the afternoon. The high 84 at the coast, 89 inland. For Sunday, mostly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. The high 81 to 85. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Chip, you never cease to amaze me. What in the world are you building with all those sticks and cardboard? Well, Mr. Marketing Guy, I'm making signs to announce the great lease offers at Ford Lincoln of Ocala and Village Ford of Bellevue. Really? What do you plan on calling it? Sign and ride. Get it? That's not how it works. Sign and ride is all about fantastic lease offers on Fusions, Escapes, Fiestas, Explorers, and remaining 2014 focuses. Wait a minute. If I understand correctly, sign and ride would mean zero down payment? Right. Zero first month's payment. Right again. And zero do it signing? Now you're on the right track. Don't waste time. Head to Ford Lincoln of Ocala and Village Ford of Bellevue today and see how easy it can be to drive off in America's favorite brand. And if you're planning to buy a new Ford, 0% financing for 72 months on select new 2015 Fords. Whether you buy or lease, now's the best time to head to Ford Lincoln of Ocala or Village Ford of Bellevue, your family of Ford dealerships where we've got what it takes. Not all buyers or models qualify for sign and ride offer or 0% financing. See dealer for complete details. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A. News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. Your source for the number one sports weekend. Fox Sports. Only on 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. This is WOCA, News Talk 1370. All right, uh, 18 minutes after 10 o'clock, Kelly Hart is here from Ocala Magazine. This is Ocala Magazine Radio. Kelly, we're talking about a pretty serious topic right now. Yes, yes, we are. Um, right before the break, I was talking about the story that's in this month's feature. It's called Dear John, and it's a story on suicide, and it was motivated by Chris Johnson's um, recent suicide that I think really shook up not just our local community but the nation as a whole especially people that follow sports and understood Chris through his connection with athleticism and his football career and I reached out because I really wanted to take the time like I do with anything that I write but especially something as sensitive as a, and important as this and I wanted to talk to as many people connected to Chris so that I could get a really good idea of who he was as a person. Everything that I had read up until this article was about Chris was very brief. It mentioned a very few details about his death, mm -hmm. um, mainly the date, um, where he was, and then it went on to, to talk about his football career. It never talked about him to me as a person. And I guess having been you know, in, in a relationship with an, with an athlete, so often people can only connect them with that one thing. And people sometimes lose sight of the fact that this was a young man. Yes, he was a stellar athlete, no doubt. Uh, but he was a young, a young man, and a young man from a very small town who was put into a very large college and had a lot of pressure on him to compete and a lot of pressure to be a stellar athlete. And he was in his senior year watching a lot of his teammates 
go into the combine with potential, you know, draft potential for the NFL. And so we don't necessarily know what Chris was dealing with. But in my mind, I guess I have my own theory because I know the pressures involved with sports and professional sports right, right, right. and making that transition. And so I wanted I wanted Chris's death to be used with a purpose. So I thought if this is a motivation for me to sit down and better understand suicide and the mental illness that is attached to suicide and write something about it, at least his death was not in vain. If I can use his situation to possibly write something that may save someone else's life. To me, that was the best thing that I could think to do to honor Chris and this community. And so I reached out because I wanted to see who would be willing to speak to me about Mm -hmm. about Chris, not about his football career and things of that nature. We had read that online. But but the real Chris, like right, what was right, really right. going on with him? So what did you what did you learn? I, I'm I'm curious. And did it change your mind? Before the break, you mentioned you know about feeling that a person who commits suicide is selfish, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, did any of those thoughts get changed because of the conversations you had? Absolutely, absolutely. I have I had never, I had my own opinion about suicide, but it was really just my own opinion. I had never taken the time to sit down and talk to someone who has either lost someone very close to them to suicide or someone who has attempted suicide unsuccessfully to find out what was really going through their mind when they decided to do that. And so in doing so, I got a really different perspective and a lot of different insight. And like I said, I, I reached out to Chris's family, and I can tell you that I was met with some resistance. There was a lot of people in his family that did not want to participate in an interview. Um, some of the feedback that I got was that it was not a suicide. It's you know, it was a, a something accidental, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I wanted everyone to have no, their, really. have their opportunity to to speak mm. on behalf of Chris. Um, and one of the the lady who gave me the majority of my information was very, very close to Chris. Her son and Chris went to school many, many years ago, became very close friends and have remained close friends up until um, Chris's death. And she sat down and I can tell you it was probably one of the, if not the hardest interview to have done because there were so many moments where she had to stop, you know, and recollect herself mm-hmm, and, and, mm-hmm. and crying for this young man. And I'm a mother and I I have a small child myself and so I'm just really putting myself in the shoes of this woman who was not his blood mother, but really played a motherly role to Chris Mm -hmm. for many, many years. And so doing that interview and listening to her become so emotional, it was a very, it, it was difficult, but it was exactly what we both needed. You know, she said doing that interview and, and speaking out on Chris's death helped her to really begin the healing process. And, That's and, interesting. And, and it yeah. was interesting because she didn't do it with that intention, of course. It was only after right. that she said to me, I feel so much better just having been able to share that with you and then knowing that you're going to share it out wow. with, a, with a positive you know, purpose, right, right. of course. Um, she provided me a lot of really great pictures of Chris that are included in this month's issue, pictures that you're not going to see on the Internet. Um pictures that really show Chris as the person, as the young man, as the as the high school boy, as the, you know, graduate being silly and playing. And um, she walked me through her relationship and her children's relationship with Chris. And then some of the details that happened that you also have not read about anywhere else online, uh, literally up until, you know, just days before his death. And then some of the details surrounding his death that have not been released anywhere else. Does at least it explain? To my does knowledge. any of that explain why he killed himself? Well, she said he came home. Uh, he showed up. You know, he was up north in school and just showed up on her doorstep one afternoon, which was not unlike him to show up. But it was unlike him to show up during the middle of a of a school week or when he's in school or unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. And she said they had some conversation when she showed up, and she said he was a very jovial, very happy, positive young man, and she could just tell in his demeanor that he was upset bummed out about something very bothered very upset uh, do we know what depressed well she said she had a conversation with him and he had decided he did not want to play football any longer um that he did not want to finish school up north he wanted to come home he wanted to finish online graduate join the military and it basically sounded as though and of course this is this is just my me, me talking uh in in what i gathered is 
he wanted to do one thing that maybe perhaps his family or friends wanted him to do the opposite. I, I feel like there was a lot of pressure being put on Chris hmm. to finish out with football and try to get into professional sports. And um, and I think that that pressure really seemed to have been affecting him. Wasn't what him. he wanted to do. Wasn't, according to him, it was not what he wanted to do. And he, he was very adamant. He had made up his mind about what he wanted to do. Um, ironically, during that time that he was home, he went... Um, the, the, the lady I spoke to, her name is um, Miss Delfino, Anne Marie Delfino, and her son Ryan and Chris, like I said, were very close. And while he was home, he mentioned he wanted to go into the military. Uh, he wanted to learn how to use a gun. He wanted to be in, you know, infantry and, and these types of things. And they they went gun shopping. Now Ryan says that while he was with Chris and they were looking at guns, Chris did not purchase a gun. But Ryan then later had to go off to work. And he believes that it was at that point maybe Chris decided on a gun and purchased it. A mm. um, few days later, Chris leaves. He goes back up north. Uh, Miss Delfino is texting him, be safe, let me know when you arrive up north. He, he says that he did. Uh, coincidentally, a day or two later, he's back in Ocala again, which everyone thought to be rather odd. And when he came back to Ocala, he once again showed up at the Delfino residence. He showed Miss Delfino's children um, this car that a friend had given to him and this new gun that he bought. He was very excited about the gun and being able to really start practicing for the military. Mm -hmm. um, and they said their goodbyes. He drove up north, and it's believed that it was the same vehicle and the same gun that he used um, to, to kill himself. He was found uh, very early on a Saturday morning at mm -hmm. a dead end street, um, you know, in a car alone with, with a gunshot wound that ultimately took his life. So Chris isn't around for us to ask, was it sincerely the military that, that you want? I mean, or was this a story? Right, was this right, a right. reason or purpose for wanting to look at guns? I mean, what was really going on? And sadly, these are things that we, we will never ever know whatever whatever he did in his life that contributed to the people around him is now known by the people who weren't around him sure whatever whatever you discovered that you put in the article i now have the ability to find out about yes. but i'm finding out about it because he took away something from those same people right that was greater than whatever he gave them which was himself right and the mission the mission that we're on uh, this is hard to Swallow, but God put us all here on a mission. Sure. And if you quit, then you have quit. Right. If you quit, then you quit, and you didn't. You didn't do the mission. You Agreed. didn't finish the mission. You you didn't have enough faith that God would get you through whatever right. the hardship was. Sure. And that's the message that I don't want to share. Uh, um, I, I don't want to share it with with children that here's a way to get people to know who you were and what, oh, you, were, absolutely. what you were about. Right. Absolutely. I want you to say, you know what, there is there is a way to have to get through everything, whether it's by your friends, your your loved ones, or sure. God, or, or all of the above. Sure. Well, and I mean, as a Christian myself, of course, if someone came to me and, and shared that they had these feelings of suicide, you know, A, I'm going to take them very seriously, especially with my background in mental health and understanding yeah. that. Uh, as a Christian, of course, I'm always going to encourage them to have faith. Um, but the, the, the purpose of this story, and there's so much information here, I do encourage you to pick up a copy or go to ocalamagazine.com and read it online. Uh, share it, please. Please share it on social media. We want Chris's story to be told um, with him as the focal point as a person and as a young man from our hometown versus just, you know, another athlete that we've, that we've lost uh, prematurely. So please share this article, read it, um, talk about suicide, talk to your children about suicide. If you have any thoughts about suicide, of course, I have included the uh, suicide prevention hotline at the very end. It's confidential. It's available 24 seven, but please make it a, make it a dialogue, make it a dialogue in an effort to save your life or someone else's. And we certainly hope that people read this and they understand it's a tragic story, but it was written with a purpose and and that was my that was my goal so and you're such a great writer kelly thank you thank you so much thank you for what you do for thank all you, of us you, you make the world a better place oh thank you every every time much. you come in here every time you write something thank you all right we'll we'll be right back what makes you look so good fox 
News Radio. I'm Pam Puso. A search for the missing in northern Illinois after a tornado tears through the town of Fairdale. We have huge uh, debris piles uh, that that we, we have to 